Hey y'all, we're gonna do another video. This one we're gonna do perimeter and area of parallelograms. And uh, this is a kind of a classic parallelogram. Really quickly, definitions of parallelogram. The opposite sides, in this case, top and bottom, are parallel and they're also equal to each other. Just kind of suspend belief and take more for it. The left-hand side and the right-hand side are also parallel and equal. That's all it takes, and four sides. That's all it takes to make a parallelogram, okay? And we've been talking about perimeter and area, okay? Uh, perimeter, you just really add the sides, the outside of it. Now, we're gonna start with parallelogram, but there are other types of parallelograms that don't look like this. Okay, we'll just take a quick look at them and then come back to this one. You'll probably recognize these. Okay, and here we go. This is a parallelogram because the opposite sides, top and bottom, left and right are parallel and equal. What makes it a rectangle, specifically, is that it has four 90 degree angles in it. This one over here, more commonly known as a square. But it is a parallelogram. Top and bottom are parallel and equal. Left and right side, parallel and equal. Parallelogram, four sides. It's also a rectangle. And one of the things that I'm going to kind of talk about quickly in this video is that um, they're all three, you do the same thing. We have different formulas, and I think that's kind of, I wish we didn't, and I'll kind of talk about them a little bit, but they really are the same, and you do the same formula for each. If we go back to the uh, what I call the classic parallelogram, please, okay? In the classic parallelogram, uh, let's bump it up just a little farther so I'm easier for me to write. Two more. There you go. That's good. Okay. In the classic parallelogram, all right, you have the four sides and you have the height of the parallelogram, okay? The base of a parallelogram, and, and it's not the English word necessarily, although this one is drawn that way, the base doesn't have to be the bottom. The base of a parallelogram, or any of the shapes that we may discuss in later videos, the base just has to be one of the sides, okay? This could be the base. You could say that this up here is the base, or even this could be the base. What makes the base of a parallelogram is it's gotta be one of the sides, and you have to have a line forming a 90 degree angle with the base, and going to the opposite side. That is called the height, okay? Um, I'm not going to prove any of the formulas that I'm gonna use, so we're just gonna take my word for it. But if you wanted to find the area of a parallelogram, the formula for the area is just the base times the height. Remember, Mr. Ma always uses a star for the multiplication symbol, okay? Again, the base has to be one of the sides. The height forms a 90 degree angle with the base, and it goes to the other, the opposite side, the side opposite from the base. So y'all, this is so simple. If you wanna find the area of a parallelogram, look for the 90 degree angle that's associated with it. In this case right here, we have a 90 degree angle. This is one of the sides. So right away, I know that this is the base. This is the height. The height can be, but it does not have to be one of the sides of the shape. In this case, it is not, okay? So that's, I mean, that's how simple finding the area of a parallelogram is. You just have to go and look for that 90 degree angle. Now, sometimes it gets a little tricky. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll come, like, I'll go over here with it. Sometimes they will extend one of the sides out like this, and then they will do something like this, and you would know that this would be the height because it's 90 degrees with the extended side, and that would make this the base. 
okay? So it can be done that way. I just wanted to show it that, you know, that's another way they, they but the key is find that 90 degree angle, okay? So if this is the base, this is the height, this is not one of the sides. I know that this is an, another base because they're equal, okay? Since this isn't a height, I'm going to have to call it something else, and we'll call it S for slant or side, if you really prefer. So now, how do I find the perimeter? Well, there's different ways to do it. I'm going to show you what I think is the safest way to do it. Fewest careless mistakes happen when I just say B plus S plus B plus S. And I just add it on my calculator. Safe and easy. But I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna stand up and say that's the only way. You could simply do this. Two times the base plus two times that slant. Or you could even do two times that. All three of those find the perimeter. Again, I like to play it safe because if I just add like that, I just tap the calculator keys a few times, I don't have to worry about order of operations or anything like that. So area, perimeter, all right? We'll quickly do a numerical example. All right, suppose we have this problem right here. Uh, we'll just make up some numbers really quickly. Uh, let's say this is 20 uh, inches, and we'll call this, obviously, we're just making these numbers up, and we'll call this, say, um, 12 inches. Okay? So here we go. They want me to find the area. Well, i got to find my 90-degree angle. Here's my 90-degree angle right here. So that means this is the height. Okay, and that would be the base. Well, Mr. Marley, you don't know, you don't have a number down there. Well, we know that in a parallelogram, the top and the bottom are the same. So that makes this 20 inches. Okay, so how do I find the area? Well, remember, base times height. Whoops. 20 times 12. Okay. I believe that is going to be 240 inches squared. Area is always squared. Now, it's late on a Friday, so I'm going to double check my work on a calculator. So good, I'm not giving you bad information. Now, the perimeter, here's where the mistake a lot of times comes in. People get the 20. And all of a sudden, that 12 pops in. Y'all, the perimeter is the outside. I don't know what the outside is yet because I didn't put it in there, okay? But so now I need to add that, all right? One of the dangers of doing videos on the fly is I don't always get all the information when I need it. Um, let's see. We'll call this, let's just say this is 14 inches. Again, you know, uh, I'm making these numbers up. They may not be actually possible. I'm sure they're not, as a matter of fact, but we're just going to pretend. So now that we know the two slants, again, the safest way for me to do it is just to say, look, 20 plus 14 plus the 20 across the top plus the 14 down here. I just think that's the safest way to do it. I, I, um, not saying that the other ways aren't quicker or whatever, and I just feel like that's the fewest mistakes happen when I just list the four sides, okay? So 20 plus 14 is 34, 54 plus another 14, I believe that is 68, and it is just inches. But again, since I'm fully armed with my calculator, 68. 
And there you go. Now again, yes, you could do 2 times 20 plus 2 times 14, and that's fine. I just like to kind of play it safe. So that is area calculation for a parallelogram. You just got to find the 90 degree angle, base times the height. And for any object that has straight sides, just add all the sides up. That's safe. But there are other ways. Okay, real quick, let's do the same thing with our rectangles and squares. So if we would just pull up the rectangles and squares, please. The rectangles and squares. Okay. This is a parallelogram. All right. Here's my right angle. That makes this the base and this the height. Now, I, I know, I know, I know, I know what you're saying. It's length times width. Y'all, it's the same thing. I really wish we would start off by teaching rectangles as base times height, and then it would be a little bit easier. The only thing you need is a 90 degree angle. But still, length times width is all good, but it's the same thing. The area, which we know as length times width, again, that is the same thing as the base times the height, because you'll notice that the sides form 90 degree angles with each other, okay? And again, we'll just really quickly to wrap this up, we'll throw some numbers in here. Um, I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll just call this 15 feet, and we'll call this 10 feet, okay? So our area, like I said, the 90 degree angle, there's our base and our height, or length and width, if, if you insist. It's just 15 times 10, and that's 150, and this was feet, so it's feet squared. Perimeter. Same thing, add all the way around. 15 plus 10 plus 15 plus 10. Okay? And that is 50 feet. And there you go. And of course, you could do 2 times 15 plus 2 times 10. Get the same result. You can do 15 plus 10. Take that in times two. All right? And the last one, let's just really quickly do the square. Okay? And there's other form. But my thing is, is I don't see what, you know, don't why memorize more formulas, formulas that we don't need. This is just base and height again. There's my 90 degree angle. The base is one of the sides. The height is 90 degrees to it. It can be one of the sides, and it is. Okay, people will say that the formula for the area of a square is the side squared. Yes, it is, because the base and the height are the same. When you multiply a number by itself, it's squared. And that, by the way, is why we call the second power squared, because anytime you multiply a number by itself, you get the area of a square that's that size. Okay? It's still base times height. You can call it base squared or side squared, it's all the same, you know? And, and to find the area of a square, all you need is the length of one side, okay? So let's call this nine meters. Well, the area, if this is nine, everything's nine. Here's my Nine times nine, and again, you could just do nine squared, but I like to play it safe, and that's 81 meters squared. And again, the reason I don't I, I play it safe on that is because nine squared becomes nine times two, an awful lot. All right, and now the perimeter. And this is the only one that really does increase because there's four equal sides, and people say, the formula is four times the side. And that works, because that's what we're getting ready to do. Nine plus nine plus nine plus nine. But see, that doesn't take long. 
Yeah, it's a little quicker to do four times nine, but still. 36 inches. But like I said, you know, that's the only one where it does take a lot, a little bit longer than doing four times nine. But again, I'm just trying to play it safe. Our goal is to get the right answer. As I've been saying lately with my students, a shortcut only works if you get to the right place, and in this case, the right answer. But I'm not gonna try to hide it. You can find the perimeter of a square just by doing four times the side. You can find the area of a square just by squaring the measurement of one of the sides. But it's all the same. Add all the sides up, you get the perimeter of any parallelogram, whether it's a square, a rectangle, or one of the more you know, slanted ones. And the area formula is the same for all three. Base times height. The base is one of the sides. The height forms a 90 degree angle. Length times width is the same thing as base times height. Side squared is the same as base times height. Find your 90 degree angle. There's your base and your height. Multiply them together. For the perimeter, make sure you're just adding together all the sides. Well, I, I hope that helps a little bit. Appreciate it. And I do apologize for the delay there in the middle. Um, my person was helping me. Seems like they might not be feeling too well and they weren't paying a lot of attention. So sorry about that, but we still got the job done. I hope it helped. Thank you.